Good morning, comrade subscribers. How are you? It's Monday morning. So I thought we'd have a quick look. I sort of tidy up here. Of the Amstrad uh, PVC boards. Now that I've got them all out. That's the modem board there that I was fiddling around with. So, um, so how does it go? So you can see here, this is all the expansion ports there. And then this goes on top. We've got a interboard connector here. So that clicks into, into there. And we've got these three standoffs there. That clicks into there. And it sits like that in the machine. So what do we have? So on this top board here, we've got the power input. Uh, we've got the floppy um, floppy controller, Zilog, uh, Zilog uh, chip. We've got the um, floppy interface, the floppy power. Negative 5 reg uh, volt regulator up here. I think it's a 7905. So that's something that could be replaced if you wanted to. Um, and uh, the RAM. So the way the RAM works, as far as I understand it, is, uh, so this is a 640K machine, and we can see here we've got a small link where we can just set to 512K or 640K. So I think um, the way I'm going to explain it is I'm going to have, this is this is a 256K block. So they're um, <clears throat> 41256. Uh, which is 256k by one bit. So we've got eight. So we've got 256k there. Then we have another 256k block here. So that's 512. Of course, it could go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It could go that way. Um, uh, wh whatever. So, but this is a 512k block. This is a 512k block. So I assume that both the 512 and the 640 would, well, basically they, they're going to be the same board. Except on the 512, we've got this and this here populated. And because we use parity, we've got an additional two uh, 41256s here. So we've got one of them for this 256 block parity. And we've got a second one for that block parity. Now to get the additional 128K for the 640 machine, We've got these two banks here. So this is a bank of 64K. This is a bank of 64K. The chips are actually MT4067. So they are 64K by four bits. So four bits, four bits. So that's your 64K, uh, 64 kilobytes. 64 kilobytes. So you've got your 128 kilobytes there. And again, for parity, We've got a 4164, so 64, um, 64K by one bit. So we've got one there and one there. So one for each of the 64K banks. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. 512K, 64K, 64K, 512K, parity, 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 parity. So I assume on a 512 board, that these four chips are missing, and then these two 4164 chips are missing. So you just need to add those in, I, I assume, I assume. Makes sense to me. So that's that's the top board. Um, of course, we've got a lot of Amstrad um, gals and all over the place. So this is the bottom board with the um, expansion ports. So we've got the ISA expansion ports here. Um, what again? There's lots of Amstrad chips on here. Uh, bah, bah, bah. So I guess so. This is um, this is actually a Sony chip. It's a Sony CXQ seven zero one one six P dash eight. So this is actually a V thirty which is the improved version of the 8086 or that, that NEC made. You can see here, copyright, not NEC. So it's rated at 8 megahertz, I guess. 
But yeah, so it's just basically a V30, not an 8086. And I assume that this is where the 8087 would go in. So this is the bottom board. Um, we've got flex connectors here. So we've got these, these two are for the keyboard. And then this is for the LCD display here. Um, we've got three crystals as well, don't we? I wonder what the... Yeah. Anyway, so monitor, uh, monitor output, uh, parallel serial, I think. And then we've got the two for the ISA, a DB25 and a DC37. So the third board that you get internally is the is the modem board. So I've actually pulled it apart a bit. It actually has this on there. So there's actually quite a bit of internal space if you wanted to pull this out. It has these kind of weird connectors here that kind of mesh, mesh together. So I'm not really sure what they're called, but you can see there we've got kind of plates or leaves, I guess, like that. And on the other side, they kind of mesh in. So they mesh in together like that. So you just gotta push them together because you can see you've got a little detent on either end. So you just gotta mash them together. Anyway, so as you probably know, the, the modem's connected, <clears throat> connected to the ISA port. Um, but I've had a look because what I'm trying, what I'd like to do is have an internal compact flash. Uh, but I've had a look, and basically what we've got on here is um, voltage. So we've got plus minus five volts ground um, speaker. We've got one pin goes to speaker. Uh, we have one interrupt pin, interrupt three, and then the rest are well, I think I/O write, I/O read, and address and data pins. So I don't think we've got enough for a full ISA bus there so um, I started building up one of these external ISA connectors so I've got everything actually I was quite surprised JCAR actually had these in stock DC37s uh, but I've got everything I've got the 244s uh, buffers or transceivers whatever they are um, resistor network there the only thing I don't have is the ISA slots and I think uh, September, I think they're back ordered from Element 14. So my idea was just to try and simplify it <clears throat> to build this internal compact flash is so we have these boards. Oh, one thing is when building this board, just a tip, I guess, is um, I kind of lined it up like that and then tacked either end. Because I didn't want to put it on, and then it's slightly off, and you can't get the, <laughs> you can't get it on. So I've, I've just done it like that, tacked it on, and then did the rest. Anyway, so the idea I had was, so this is where the modem card sits in the machine. So basically, take the modem card out. Now, connecting. Connecting this to this. So obviously one way you can do it is solder up a ribbon cable to the pins and then have the ribbon cable come out, kind of come around 90 degrees up to here. Or alternatively, um, I was thinking of getting um, a DB25, DC37, uh, with an IDC connector so that you can um, crimp on ribbon cable that way I can plug them into there and then loop the ribbon cable in inside the machine and then around to here and again you know rather than having on these on here I could have just soldered the ribbon cable on but you know that's obviously a lot of work and also it means it's kind of fixed so if I try at a start to just plug it in there bring it in and then plug it into there. At least that way it can be pulled apart, pulled apart and, you know, restored. Anyway, so that's the idea. So I have it like that in the machine. And then I'd want to get, now you need the rear side down here. So I think this is the rear end. I think when you put it in the machine, 
that's facing the expansion ports. So I want to get a right angle ID ISA connector and then fit it in like that. So I think that should be, I'm going to compare it to this, it should just fit. Should just fit. So have it in there. Well, actually, maybe not like that. Maybe have it down here a bit. And then where this sat, where that sat, because that's where the, um, the telephone cable would plug in. I could maybe, actually, let me just grab grab one. So we just look at the ISA connectors. You know, that's compact flash. So I could, um, you know, flatten this out or cut that off, whatever, basically cut it off, drill some holes in there. And I could, but I was thinking, you know, I could use this because this, this is exposed uh, to the outside of the machine. So I've got, there's already a hole there, so I could just continue that hole there and um, fit the compact flash in and then um, just screw it in, screw it in either side. So I'm probably thinking something like that. Screw here, screw there, so it's attached to this. And um, like that. Yeah, so then you've got your compact flash accessible from the outside. That was, that's what I was thinking. Hopefully, the whole way I've explained it, you can visualize it. Um, but yeah, I can't do that until I can get my hands. Actually, the right angle ones, I think, are available, but they're like $25 each compared to $5 for a normal vertical ISA. So I think vertical ISA is like that, but that's... Um, I think that's that's too much room. There's not enough room for that. So I'm going to have to go. I did think of other ways of doing it. It's just, again, just, you know, wiring it on or something like that. Yeah. So that's the idea. I had one other idea. <laughs> Is to uh, strip the 41256s from here so that I can stick it in my PCXT and upgrade the board to 640K. But um, let's see. Anyway, that was it. That was just a quick video about that. Um, let's see how we go. Bye for now.